Pony Tales. Read by Scribbler. Matchmaker, Matchmaker by Abalidoff. Hi, AJ. Applejack swung the door open a little wider and smiled. Twala, can I help you? Um, yes, actually. Why, well, don't you stay in there? Come on in. Applejack led the way to the kitchen and pulled a couple of bottles of cider out of the icebox. The apples were only now experimenting with bottlery, but the idea had proven extremely popular with the town. I need to borrow some kind of eclectic things from you, Twilight said. And I promise to tell you what they're for eventually, but not yet. Maybe it's a bit ominous, Twilight. I know, but I promise it's not anything bad. All right, then. What is it you need? A piece of your sturdiest apple wood, about the size of my leg. Also some fresh apple cores if you have any around. Oh, and, uh... She paused. We seem to be looking everywhere but Applejack's eyes. I am? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to say this. You just started using new fertilizer on the orchard. By a dry, milk and manure gets pretty old after a while. The new fertilizer. Twilight's voice dropped to almost a whisper. Applejack wondered briefly why she was being so odd about this one part of her request. Does it have phosphorus in it? Sure does. Fortified with a bunch of other elements, too. Twilight sighed with relief. Oh, right, good. I'll need some of that, too. Probably about two pounds worth? Why? Applejack stopped herself just in time. She trusted Twilight to tell her what she was up to, eventually. No reason to pry now. Yeah, I can get that for you. No problem. Do you need it now? No, no, whenever you have the time is fine. I know you're busy, and it'll just be another excuse to say hi. Oh, Twa, you don't need no excuses to say hi. She hugged her friend goodbye, completely missing a spread of blush across Twilight's cheeks. Twelve days later, Applejack's birthday party was fairly calm, by Pinkie Party standards. The usual decorations and games were up, but the whole affair had more of a feeling of a casual meeting of friends than of a raucous social occasion. All right, yo, Applejack said after the cake had been finished off. She glanced at Pinky, who was quite literally vibrating with excitement. I guess it's time for a pr presents. Pinky shouted. Presents, Pinky, I take it you want to go first. Oh no, I'm just excited in general. I don't mind when I go. The gifts she received were thoughtful and she could match them to the givers perfectly. A handsome set of new boots from Rarity, an assortment of treats for the farm's animals from Fluttershy, and so on. But the small box in the back of the pile, neatly and plainly wrapped and light as anything, was a mystery. All right, this wise one must be from Twilight. She lifted the box. It was oddly rattling, and tore off the paper. The box itself was unmarked, drawer style, she slid it open and removed one small, obviously hoof-carved stick with a tiny dollop of something dark red on the end. My itches? I found a book on matchmaking techniques, Twilight explained, while I was looking for uh, s something else. She coughed. <clears throat> um, well, I remember that you were complaining that you kept breaking the matches you bought from the store, so I made you some. The sticks are wood from apple family trees, and the phosphorus in the heads is from the fertilizer you gave me. The apple cores went into cellulose gel to stabilize the phosphorus, and I extracted some essential oils from them so they'll smell like apples when you burn them. Why, well, this is a right thoughtful gift, Sugar Cube. Applejack smiled. I appreciate the amount of work it must have gone into it. Oh, Twilight said. It was... <laughs> I'm glad you liked them. I have to ask, though, how the high were you acting so awkward when you asked about the phosphorus? I... I was afraid that you'd think I was making fun of you. Ponies always used to think that I was mocking them, when I would just come out and ask about chemistry or genetics or something like that. Oh, Twilight, 
I never think you were making fun of me. If I didn't know what you meant, I'd just ask. Although, it is a bit silly that y'all would think I didn't know what all was going into my trees. Okay, Twilight said. She smiled, genuinely, but a bit hesitantly. I'll keep that in mind. Enjoy the matches. The party was wrapping up. Rainbow Dash had already taken off, and Fluttershy and Rarity were helping Pinkie take down the decorations. Applejack pulled up to Twilight, who was using her magic to pull streamers off the walls. Ma'am Twi, she said. You want to tell me why you were looking at the book on matchmaking? Well, you know, I'm interested in all sorts of historical technology. Nope, you're lying. Twilight's head sank. I was reading every romance book I could find in the library, and that one had gotten this file. You want to talk about it? What's to talk about? I've got a crush, and I'm too scared to do anything about it. Applejack leaned forward and nuzzled Twilight gently. I am that crush wouldn't be on little old Muddy, would it? Twilight blushed so hard, Applejack thought she was going to ignite like a match herself. It, uh, how did you I know a bit more about making matches than you might think, Twy? I know it stinks a high heaven for an awful long time. And you must have taught yourself with them besides. So you must have done it away from the library. And that all adds up to one heck of a lot of work and time. I know the lengths you go to for your friends, Twilight Sparkle, but that kind of effort says crush. Well, Twilight said, after the shock wore off, now you know. Now I know. Applejack kissed Twilight on the cheek. And it seems to me like you just lit some kind of fire. See you around, sugar. That was Matchmaker, Matchmaker. It was written by a Baladoth and read by Scribbler. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope I pronounced the author's name correctly. A Baladoth, a Baladoth, a Baladoth. If one of these is right, please click your buzzer now. Um, right, this is a sort of a bit more of a positive thing to follow up from the immense amount of sad fix I've done recently. And also because I know what I've got planned next. Apart from that, I don't think I have anything really significant to add. So, be lovely to each other, and good night, everybody.